one actually because I I just Todd just answered me because I sent I te texted him the photo. We're live. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Adam here at Record Crate. I'm at the Raleigh location this afternoon, and uh, there I am. Hello, hello, and hanging out with uh, Martin BC. How are you, Martin? Good. Hello. Hello, everybody. I'm gonna flip the camera around, and I'm gonna walk around the counter, and uh, and we're just gonna hang out and talk with Martin. Martin's in town today. He's doing a show tonight at Slim's. Wonderful little, uh, wonderful venue we have here in Raleigh. And oh, I'm on. Okay. You are on, and I'm sure it's going to be a fantastic show. And and thanks so much for stopping by and and hanging out with us and doing a meet and greet this afternoon. How are you? I'm good. Good, you know, good, good. It's nice to be on the road again, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, seen a lot of green. I might, you know. It's... We have some green here. <laughs> you have to watch out when you walk around. Oh, yeah. And yeah. we also have a lot of things that make us go sneeze and lots of allergies here yeah. in, in North Carolina. Well, you know, I'm in the studio, like, so much and unhealthily maybe too much. Yeah, So yeah. it's really, I mean, and it's also not healthy to be in a car for six hours straight but, well but yeah at least i'm out yeah so, so it feels good yeah and, and and speaking of your studio you were sharing with me that this is an image inside your studio and folks just look at that stonework there it's amazing yeah those are the back doors and that's just a, a view inside actually yeah. the, the room is goes this way and then there's like an l-shaped uh -huh. so it's kind of an l-shaped room and then actually behind that wall which is really thick there's another live room that sort of connects with um, with windows that you also don't see. So, the, so it's actually like two large live rooms, so I get separation wow. from different instruments. But well, large is, is the uh, is the um, operating operative term. Yeah, yeah. We tend well, to go for a lot of ambience, large spaces. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Well, speaking of your studio. BC thirty five. Why don't you Why don't you tell us a little bit about these two records we're looking at right now? One that shows the uh, inside of the studio, and this one shows that's the couch in the control room. So the board is this way. So we're kind of the the, the image is sort of taken from like where the console is. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of people uh, that's part of their experience at my place. Wow. Yeah. And these wonderful names here. You may not be as familiar with his names as much as you are the bands that these uh, that these wonderful cats are part of, but uh, lots of things to talk about. But Martin, why don't you just tell us a little bit about these two records and this is uh, two of the things you're promoting uh, on your tour, correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this one came out last year in April and this one just came out uh, at the end of April now, volume two. It was mm -hmm. originally, um, actually the, what ended up happening is on the 35 year anniversary of the studio, we had um, a weekend of recording, but it was sort of a hybrid of performance and recording. So we had an yeah. invited audience, it was yeah. kind of, you know, semi-private, people brought friends. Wow. So maybe like, you know, at times, maybe up to 80 people or 70 people, something like that. Oh, that's cool. But it wasn't. It was sort of live, but really everyone understood that it was um, a recording. So you got basically it was almost like being invited to the basic tracking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, people figured out what they wanted to do, or we kind of helped figure it out for them, which was, um, mm -hmm. um, which was uh, either t to write a piece of music, a new piece of music, as some people did. Mm -hmm and with a collaborator and everyone sort of had to have some history at the studio yeah or oh, cool. um or like improvisation so i i actually was in some of the, in a couple of the on um, these sort of ad hoc ensembles oh cool and uh, no one's like a real like improviser you know i mean pe people aren't like dedicated improvisers so even in the improvised pieces it's like uh you know bob burt from sonic youth he's not exactly like an i mean of course he can improvise but that's not he's not like a you know, jazz improviser or noise improviser. Mm -hmm. It's more like a rocker. So it was a lot of these like rock people yeah. improvising. So you have um, uh, the guitar player from Blind Idiot God. You have uh, um, Algis from um, Algis Kisses from X Swans and also of Cabbages and Kings. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. you have, uh, uh, let me see, you have Brian from Dresden Dolls, the drummer. Uh, so also, because I really, really would make an effort to keep this balanced. So there's also young people, you know, 
younger yeah. people that, that are, I feel, are part of the history now, so I want to include them. So bands like, uh, newer bands like Pop 1280 from yeah. New York. Uh, a newer band, uh, Parlor Wall. So it's not the bands themselves, it's like members of. So there's yeah. a lot of members of. Also Cop Shoot Cop. Yeah. Um, the band White Hills from New York, so members of White Hills. And it's really like between the two records, I think it's uh, freaking over two hours of music. Wow, that's cool. Because there's also like um, seven inches. So it's like, you know, 22 minutes aside. Then there's a bonus seven inch in each one. Wow. So it gets up there. Just to remind everybody, Adam here at Record Crate Raleigh, and we're speaking with Martin. We're speaking with Martin BC. He's in town. Uh, he's playing tonight at Slim's, and he brought back brought by some records to share with us. And he's he's here for a meet and greet. So folks, come on down and 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 meet this wonderful musician, this wonderful sound engineer, recording studio engineer, producer, and he's he has a wonderful history. One of the most beautiful uh, list of things that he's been a part of and and he is actually part of bc 35 and is that the name of your studio bc it's the, the name of the studio is bc um studio bc and studio somehow you know it's funny because as an abbreviation we were talking about this project we called it bc 35 and i didn't know what the cult with the title it and people are like bc 35 there you go and i guess it says it right there there you go and this is your most recent solo record yeah oh um, cool well, most recent is at this point five years five years but i have a new one coming out in november which is called solstice well cool which well, actually actually picks up on this one it's a bit of a similar Bit of a similar vibe, sort of, I don't know, uh, yeah. kind of tapping into something kind of ancient, sure. I feel. Light, a lot of light. Sorry, my phone is yeah. pinging. It's totally okay. <laughs> yeah. That's the world. It's, it's um, probably everybody that we could think of that we would like to have ping our phone. So Music Chatter says, what's up? And, uh, and Logan asks, uh, have him sign the album. Which album would you like for him to sign, Logan? And, and we'll, of course, have to ask him if he'll be glad to do that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about BC. When did that get started? Uh, yeah. Well, as as a lot with me, it doesn't it doesn't start with a whole lot of intention, right? I mean, even this whole this whole project. Uh, did I mention that that when when we started doing? Well, actually, what, actually, I didn't mention that. Is that actually um, that that weekend of recording was actually initially was thought of as uh, was going to be like a like a benefit because I had some medical expenses from an, from an assault. Oh. And then when I looked in the calendar, and we were going to do it at some time, and then when I looked at the calendar, it occurred to me, I was like, oh my God, the 35-year anniversary is coming up. Yeah. And then it morphed into that. So I, I actually, if it hadn't been for, for the assault, I might never have actually um, even come up with this concept. It, yeah. just, I just, it just focused me. So anyway, the, the origin of the studio was also, first of all, the origin of the studio is what I was like, I guess it was 19. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I mean, one of my one of my strokes of luck was just simply to be in New York. Uh, I'm a native New Yorker. Um, you know, 1979. I graduated from high school, and uh, you know, rents were super cheap. I mean, so I just so basically we just got a space, which is this space. We got a space uh, to live in me and Bill Laswell and some of the people from material. Uh -huh. Um, and, and, you know, I was kind of age wise, I was kind of in the middle Fred Marr from uh -huh. material who later ended up like producing Lou Reed and yeah. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to stuff. I'm going to pick up a copy of material that I have. Ah, yeah. And, uh, right there. There you go. That attribute sticker on there was there before, uh, before we, you reached out. And yeah, so yeah. Yeah, so um, so the, the, this was the, the, the band was the band and production team that eventually became material, but I think the name was already kicking around. I think we were like Zoo Band initially, like Z-U. Um, and actually it was sort of very collective-y. Like I was mm -hmm. actually not a musician in material, but as a sound person, just doing the live sound, I was kind of considered a member. So we had this sort of vision mm -hmm. of, of, of like kind of very collectivist. And so basically we were like, well, we'll just get a space. I mean, it was like 500 bucks a month, right? Yeah. So we were like, we'll get a space, easy to split that five ways, right? Not a big, not a big challenge. Yeah. And uh, you know, it, it just cobbled together. I got a little bit of gear to, to do some recording. Uh -huh. And honestly, it's Bill Laswell who had the sort of like a little more of an ambition yeah. about, or, or just a vision that like we could do something a little bit more. Also, he was a hotshot bass player in town 
for like sessions and stuff like that. So um, Brian Eno, who was around, um, and this being a different era, more accessible, like you could actually go up to people like Brian Eno at a club or something and just start chatting. Yeah. So um, that wasn't me. I was 19 years old. That's just, you know. But Laswell actually reached out to, to Brian Eno a bit oh. and got chattier, but just in general, maybe also for you know trying to get some session work maybe or something. But then some of the whole thing slipped out that we were actually starting to do some recording in the space and what the space was like. And Eno took a big interest. And I think Eno was very interested in New York in general at that time. Yeah. There was this weird period between 1977 when he did the No New York record, which was sort of like the genesis of No Wave. Mm -hmm. um, the, the No No New York record has, uh, I guess it's like an EP, just four bands on it, like Lydia Lunch, James Chance and the Contortions, DNA. And um, so that was a, a weird, dark period for Eno, where he yeah. wasn't his normal, like, egghead self. No, sorry. But, you know, he, none of that sounds like Eno to me, but that was Eno, and he was in New York through the time when he he helped with this recording studio, with my recording studio. So what happened is he took an interest in the space. I think he was just interested in doing stuff around New York and he realized we were at a special moment in that town. And um, he literally it came up to help me finish the recording studio. Oh, that's wonderful. So he, so he um, I mean, it was as simple as he was friendly. He came, he visited the studio. He loved that we were like way out of, in the middle of kind of nowhere, that it was kind of dangerous. and Yeah crazy and he gave me the money to not go not a huge studio but enough to record some ambient stuff he oh thought, that's totally he, he cool thought in this space it would be nice to do some ambient yeah type recording so that's what happens that's really the the genesis of bc studio yeah i have to be really record nerdy about this because sometimes i gloss over this and just say bc studio but the reality is is we called it initially oao O A O. yeah which is operation all out which we took from operation all out. i like we, that we, yeah and depending on who we talk to, we might say sometimes over and over. But over and over. It was OAO, yeah. and it was taken from a William Burroughs book, yeah. I guess Naked Lunch. And um, there was also a, a label, Celluloid, a French label, that also took an interest in us. And they put yes, a little yes. series where you can see OAO in the corner. Like it has like a... Like I think I've seen that. Little, yeah. Little thing. I have um, some Celluloid label. stuff. So that yeah. was named after the studio. So for record nerds, that's a little thing to be a little more specific. Yeah. And then... The, ter the, the w same studio, but then the word, the, the name BC Studio came um, when me and Laz will sort of briefly parted ways. And I felt mm -hmm. like a different name. Oh, okay. But, so that's, in case you're wondering, yeah. um, that's what happened. And so I just happened to have both those records uh, that came out of my personal listening library, the Eno. Yeah. I was very fortunate to find a very nice copy of that. So the main thing that was recorded at the studio where it's pretty much all represented is the opening track, which is uh -huh. li Lizard Point. Lizard Point. Yeah, Keep so, that in mind, people. So Lizard Point is all OAO, BC Studio, yeah. Bill Laswell. And make sure Martin, you have your speakers set up correctly. <laughs> Martin BC and, and there all you that go. stuff. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And then as I'm holding this, this, this is actually when material got a little more, um, well, got on a major label for one thing. Sure. Yeah. And uh, Whitney Houston guess on a song mm -hmm. um, the basic tracks were recorded here in this space yeah and um, it was like her for it was like her um, her debut as a uh, yeah. as a lead singer I think she did like backup work I think she was a teenager oh yeah 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 and when this happened yeah very good stuff yeah yeah and then uh, and then as far as timeline um, did material come before the Eno project, or Eno come first? Well, I think um, the timeline, I mean, at this point is so brief, whether it's a couple of months. Oh, but okay. The, but the whole thing, you know, basically, the origin of material happened in 1978. Yeah. So it's actually, what's a year before I moved into this space. And it's, I guess, two years, two and a half years before we were like, okay, I guess we're recording now, which was with Brian Eno. So 78... Um, basically, through a little bit of weird connections, yeah, um, we had David Allen from Gong. Oh, cool! Yeah, yeah. he he was in town, and because uh, we were connected to this guy Georgia Gomelski, who was 
again, someone who was like a supporter and he had been a manager of like the Yardbirds and all this stuff. Uh -huh. He wasn't British, but he'd worked in like old old London in the psychedelic and the, the blues revival scene. Yeah. And I think like managed the Rolling Stones even for a minute. And oh, wow. So this guy knew David Allen and David Allen wanted to put together like a band to tour the US and that became and to record and so that became called New York Gong and Material sort of called itself the Zoo Band, Z-U mm -hmm. but that was Material and it started in like 78, 79 okay. so actually yeah I think 79 contemporaneous with this yeah. the, the name that was Laswell's idea, the, the name Material cool. the only other the only other piece, I, well there's two pieces I could show you, uh, the only so the, I'll show you another piece that I happen to have and um Pardon me for the mm -hmm. camera. Someone did ask, uh, what's the story with Laswell and Joey Ramon? Oh. <laughs> Apparently there's a story there. I don't know. Or That's some really inside stuff. Maybe I know the story, but just didn't put two and two together. Uh, and I mean, the, broadly or like my little anecdote, which I, I, I... They just said, what's the story with Laswell and Joey Ramon? Well... Uh, during the recording of the Ramones... Yeah, there was brain a, drain. Yeah, there was there was a moment. Wow, someone's really keyed in. Were you there? Um, oh yeah, yeah, I was there. I and, mean, basically. And why aren't you here, person? <laughs> uh, basically, uh, I mean, you know, Laswell was what's the word for that? He was kind of prickish, I guess, prickly prickish. Yeah. And basically, um, you know, he's also a control freak. And uh, we we were in this in my place with um, one of those big samplers, I guess a Fairlight or a Saint Clavier. It's like a oh, seventy thousand wow. yeah. dollar thing that now you can do for like you know twenty bucks, right? Yeah. But it had a library with all kinds of sounds, and this was the end because this the, the the thing that the thing that happened. Remember when I said that me and Laswell briefly separated? Is what yeah. happened is we kind of separated, but then he kind of I think missed the sort of DIY kind of situation. So even, which was fun, even on these like major label projects that he was getting, he was getting like the big stuff, as he'd bring those projects back to this studio for like little stuff. So we, so yeah. with, the, with the, on the Ramones thing, it was like oh, some backup vocals, some doodads and dads, you know, just like little stuff, right? So it was like, I think three days at my place. And then that big Fairlight with a sampler was there. And basic, basically it was like, the record is done. And Joey was like, well, let's let's screw around a little bit. I don't that that's not exactly the word he used, but he says, let's let's see what we can do. So he wanted to find maybe see if there's maybe samples and stuff. And actually, my personal opinion of that record is they could have used a little fun. Yeah. And the Ramones are kind of a fun band. So I that made sense to me. And Laswell was like, you know, more of like, you know, he wanted to be a, like a serious producer, process, blah blah, blah control. And, uh, you know, as, as professional as possible. And I thought it missed a little. So that all seemed very good that Joey would do that. But then Laswell was like, uh, I can say the F word, right? Absolutely. So, so let's, so, so. Fun, fun, fun. <laughs> that's, what, that's the F word. There you go. Help so, yourself. Um, so Laswell um, said, okay. Um, but as long as we, it's so, as long as we know that we're just fucking around. And it's okay to fuck around, but nothing will come out of it. So as long as we know that this is not gonna lead anywhere. And something like that. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And uh, actually a little more offensive than I made it just yeah, sound. Yeah, absolutely. But kind of nasty. And then Joey just got up and boy, is he tall. And like, he's like this tall. Well, well, Laswell. Laswell's tall? Me. Laswell's like this. And then Joey's. And then Joey's. So Joey's never, like, up there oh in the sky. God. And Joey was like that, and I'd never seen it. And, and uh, Bill was sweating it. Uh, Joey, he, J Bill was up sweating it for sure. And Zoe put, Joey put his hand right up to Bill's face. I'm going to punch you in the face. Everybody's going, go, Joey. But no, um, wow. yeah, there was no crime to report. It was yeah. just that moment. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, but you know, I guess that's okay. I'm sure you were going like, "Whoa, check this out!" I mean, it's okay to talk talk shit a little because I, I mean, I like I, I actually like some. I mean, I don't. I'm not proud of the bad stuff about me, but when it comes up, I mean, I I, I, I can own the shit. So, uh, I grew up watching rock and roll shows, uh, but I think probably the first music video I saw was Herbie Hancock. And there's Future Shock right there. And the video was Rocket. And uh, and I just c 
couldn't wait for MDV to show that video again so I could just watch it and analyze it. And then, of course, finally got a, got a video, video recording of it. And I was like just watching that over and over and over. Well, the, the video, uh, I mean, my, my whole, uh, it's funny because I was disappointed by the video. Um, uh -oh. Well, my, my thing is that, that, that the, the, well, there's two sides of it. I mean, um, the whole thing of, like, getting what at the time was, like, a faded legend, the whole, mm -hmm. like, finding the faded legends and kind of bringing them a little more to life. And, you know, th that, that's Laswell. That, that's and I would participate in that that's fine that's just not my my inclination I'm, I'm a bit more grassroots in fact I'm grassroots I like yeah. I mean my dream if anything would not be to work with an established artist it would be to work with an artist that no one knew about that's the magic yeah that sounds, that's that sounds much better to me yeah. to find a band that no one knows about believing in the band or the artist and then like oh my god then people respond and it gets bigger that's much better than finding someone that's already big yeah. anyway that's me Laswell was the, the kind of faded legends legend thing and I was way into hip-hop at the time and, and so was Bill you know but and but I was very excited about like the sort of youth culture in the Bronx around um, hip-hop and the Zulu nation around Africa Bombada mm -hmm. so it's like very into this urban thing and um, you know along with like avant-garde and noise music and um, when the video came out it was it was this different vision it, it wasn't very I guess you could see it as being hip hop, but I, I thought it wasn't very black. Yeah. Basically, and I kind of, and I'm not even criticizing it now. So I'll take it as a criticism. Actually, you know what? I'm, I was wrong. That's a great video. <laughs> I'm totally <laughs> grateful that it was made. So oh. I was wrong to have any criticism, but that was my impression at the time. There you go. Because I thought it should be more street. Yeah. Kind of basically, because that's how I heard the song. Yeah. You know. Um, but wow. that, but that was the video. Also, it's funny because that the um, when the when it won the Grammy and they performed the Rocket Band with Herbie performed. Yeah. Um, I think that's a good thing to to watch. Oh, okay. Finding that that performance. Oh, I have to look um, that up. And it has some of the robots from the video. Yeah. At, at the performance, that's because that the song was already a, a hit basically, yeah. and that was the first inkling I felt that the world knew what that sound was because yeah. there was the uh, the scratching, the turntablism, and people just thought it was like a weird quirky sound and then when they actually saw it being performed live i mean it's a fun fun uh, the, the video at least i saw of the, the the grammys performance it pans around you have brooke shields with her like jaw almost in her lap but like, like people people <laughs> were like they never seen anything like it now it seems kind of like obvious but back then it was kind of groundbreaking yeah, and then america uh, realized what they'd actually been listening to yeah it was awesome um, that, that was the first time i ever heard the word herbie hancock and it wasn't until much later that I learned about his past with, with jazz. Yeah. And so. Uh, well, that was that was the kind. Of, that's the that was the bit of the Laswell yeah. demo of the the, yeah. the faded legend. Which also, again, I don't want to sound like complaining because sure. I, I loved working with the like like for instance, I loved working with Ginger Baker. We did a couple of Ginger Baker records. Oh wow. Yeah, but that's also but see that's Bill's way. You know, my way was inter I was a little more interested in. Um, um, and excited about some of the local yeah. bands, so I was a little more like local bands kind of got oh, cool. me more excited, yeah. and um, so I would be. For, 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 actually, it's funny because the the band Live Skull, um, yeah. that's actually reunited on these BC Thirty Five records. Um, they call themselves um, New Old Skull on the records, and actually now, as of this year, um, they've actually af after the record was actually manufactured, they kind of realized, you know what, we're just reuniting live there skull. You go. But that was more my thing rather than thinking about like finding Herbie Hancock or finding yeah. Ginger Baker. So we were talking about Herbie Hancock, and we were talking about the song uh, "Rocket," and uh, we we're talking about the video performance on the Grammys, and and this is the record I right hear Herbie Hancock feature "Shock." And I don't have the twelve-inch single, but the twelve-inch single is also a very good listen. And so yeah, and and Martin. Uh, was involved in uh, in this record, so yeah. Just think, if it wasn't for you, bam, well, it may have been an entirely different experience. So well, thank you for that. Well, you know, I can I can tell you what, it, what a couple things that would have been different if it wasn't for me. I mean, it's, it's simple, but the two it's kind of interesting. I still think it would have been hit if I if if I didn't exist, you know, whatever. But the thing that was funny was uh, I mean, this story's been told, so maybe some of your viewers have heard it. But sure. anyway. Um, What's kind of fun is that uh, uh, we knew we wanted tur turntablism, 
Laswell was like, we have records to scratch, and he wanted to get a little more. You know, he he actually had some world music, like a stack of world mm-hmm. music vinyl, like some gamelan Indonesian music, that that he thought that the DJ uh, DST now DXT um, could scratch. Yeah. Right? So actually, we were, he was messing around with all these vinyls and and actually wasn't finding the right thing. I mean, he was like searching around. And then it seemed like we were kind of just not getting a, a thing that he was happy with. It's just the Gamelon thing wasn't working. A whole bunch of stuff wasn't working. Uh-huh. And then uh, I was like, I don't know. And back then I used to actually keep a stack of records I'd recorded. I mean, the studio was only like three years old at that point. So it wasn't a huge stack. There was like a couple of dozen records that had been recorded. So I just picked pick the one off the top. And that ended up being what the scratch the scratching on Rocket was. So the, the thing that was actually scratched was also recorded at my space. Oh. Which is pretty great. So yeah. that was, so I guess the scratch itself would not have been if I hadn't have just like, oh, here's this record. And what that record was, was uh, the Freddy, the Fab Five Freddy record that came out on that record, on that label Celluloid that I mentioned yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. And actually, yeah. The, I think that that Fat Five Fred Freddy record was part of the OAO series, yeah. which was the name of the studio back then, OAO. But anyway, so that, that record, and the, the name of the track is um, um, uh, Change the Beat. Actually, it's got a B-side and an A-side, and uh, the A-side is in English, and it's mm-hmm. called Change the Beat. The B side is in French, which is like really like F- Fab Five Freddy, like rapping in French. He's not. Let's just say he's not a francophone, you know. Yeah. So um, and then, <laughs> but that was called, funny. It's called Une Sale Histoire, like oh. a, a dirty story or a yeah, yeah. A nasty story. Yeah. And then at the end of the the track, the end of that side, there's a vocoder that's exposed. It's like the track ends, and there's a vocoder, and then the, a vocoder voice says. This stuff is really fresh. So fresh is the scratch that's on oh. that moment that's on the Herbie Hancock record. That is so cool. We're talking with Martin B.C. today, and uh, he's playing tonight at Slim's, which is downtown Raleigh on downtown Raleigh. Forget the street. It's not Salisbury, but it's the other street. Wilmington Street. There we yes. go, folks. It's a street that if you want to go to Wilmington, you just hop on it and go. Only it's one way. So anyway, uh and uh, so he, he stopped by for a little meet and greet, and we're just hanging out, talking about cool things. Share what you will with us. Oh, the only thing I have left to show is that um, you you work with this band. You're not this particular record, but uh, you work with this band. This band used to come and play Raleigh, and they gave me this record. And and uh, and I was showing Martin this record. And not only did you work with John Todd, but Fing Fing Foo, I think. I did record Fing Fang Foo, and that Fing was Fing one of these members. Yeah, I, I'm not actually sure of the pronunciation, but I think it's. Oh, yeah. Fing Fang Fing Fang. Fing Fing Fang Freddy. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, and then the member, one of the members of Fing Fang Foo, Fing Fang Foo, is in Solar Halos, which is a, a local band in the, the Triangle area. Oh, cool. Um, that are really great. Yeah. And, um, uh, it was that Fin Fan Foom record that we did was produced, I think, by the basically produced at my place by the drummer of the John Todd record, whose name yeah. is Damien Lee, even though he doesn't credit himself. I think yeah. he has a weird pseudonym yeah. on the back. Freddie the Drunk or something. Anyway, yeah. uh, someone asked what was it like to work with Say Uh <laughs> I wonder if it's a little loaded. Uh oh, uh oh. All right, whoever you are, quit these later closer. It was a wonderful experience. He learned a lot, and he learned a lot of life lessons that helped him in his next project. Is that is that what someone said? No, that's no. what I just said. That's what I should say. <laughs> yes. What he said. What Adam said. No, <laughs> uh, well, I think it was. Fun. I was a. I was a, a, a brat. I was a kid. You yeah. know. Um, um, I was kind of. I just kind of kept my mouth shut a little bit. I was very grateful to be yeah. in the place I, because I was. A, I was a, actually when I met the people involved in Cellular, I was still in high school. You know. So oh wow. When, when you're talking about like, and you know, I. I mean, also, I, uh, I just had my like social area that I was comfortable with, which was um, graffiti. I mean, I was a graffiti artist in in Manhattan and the Bronx. And so I hung out with other like teenagers doing that stuff. And then the the world, the big adult world, I mean, Laswell was like six years older than me. I mean, you know, he was like 25. Oh, that was um, awesome. And he, he was the one that was like a, a kind, I mean, he was a, a mover, shaker, talker. Yeah. He was just more of that kind of personality. It was about personality. He had that. 
And so he really is the one that interacted with celluloid. Yeah. Um, I think that probably there's a lot of complex stories from different artists about working on celluloid. I think sometimes labels can be that. Yeah. Um, also, that was an era of the business that an, an era in the time of the business that was just generally a, a, a little less ethical yeah. or a little less ov- at least overtly or hopefully ethical as like now we at least have standards that we hope that are more, a little that's more, true a little more yeah. like spelled out that supposedly people kind of yeah. you know but at the time I mean I, I had a sweet deal really um, with celluloid there was a point somewhere in this when we started getting kind of moving and grooving a bit more after Eno so after Brian Eno things kind of picked up obviously and then um uh celluloid wanted a little bit of a piece of action maybe that was going to mm-hmm. happen at the studio so they um they paid the rent so they picked up that 500 bucks a month for the studio all right and then we love celluloid and <laughs> well it's from saying so they basically yes. basically then i i just charged a, i charged the per diem so right so people would come in and record for, for me for the whole day and give me 40 bucks 30 bucks yeah for food yeah and um and that was all fine you know that's and awesome some of it some of it maybe ended up because it was like sort of an in so some of it ended up in celluloid which is an interesting label that was covering hip-hop some world music um and um yeah i guess some like no wave punky stuff yeah you know? so it was a uh, and and they were and they were french yeah well, it, actually, we don't know what nationality they were, but they spoke French. They it, spoke it, the French. whole thing was a little shady. Like the, yeah. the guy, the owner, we couldn't figure out actually his nationality. We weren't sure if he was Turkish or Bulgarian. Um, he, sometimes he said different nationalities. Maybe that's just the way it is in Europe. I, I didn't know. But whatever it is, it was all, it was all good. I'm, I'm actually okay with what happened and very grateful. Wow, I mean, the whole that's thing awesome. Was kind, of, kind of magical. I mean, really, yeah. I was just lucky to be, I mean, frankly, New York then, as opposed to, you know, even potentially now, but then was... It was just a good moment, you know, so I was lucky to be born, you know, when I was. Yeah, well, that's awesome. It's, it's also wonderful when you can do things you enjoy doing. And yeah, actually, you know, just for, for um, inside, by the way, each of these records has a, has a poster. Okay. And on in volume two, it's all these, um, all these, like, um, like, uh, archival photos so that's the studio in Gowanus Brooklyn that's me walking through the the driveway um that's the space with like a uh, uh, that's a uh, this was an Elliot Sharp project Elliot Sharp yeah you don't see Elliot in the photo but um that was his wreck he's like maybe standing yeah. in, on the, actually, the, actually there he is uh. so there's Elliot and there's there's weirdly enough Bad Moon Rising from Sonic Youth I didn't even look that closely at the photo so this is on the inside. Maybe that's a little, oh this oh here's an interesting photo. This is the actual space before Brian Eno when it was just raw. There's no board. There's no tape machine, and that's Bill Laswell, Robert Quine. Um, you know Robert Quine? He was uh, when uh, he was with the Voidoids. Richard oh, Hell and the Voidoids. Oh, Richard Hell and the Voidoids. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, a very special guitar player like also played with Lydia Lunch oh. um, what I loved about Robert was that he was the guitar soloist who hated guitar solos mm-hmm. exactly what I felt I needed at that time and that's Fred Marr they had a band called Deadline Fred Marr playing um, percussion the drummer's not in the shot and this is a, this actually is from the actual recording of the BC35 record that was the space sort of set up and this was me. You saw I, I, I had a headband on. I looked like I was, I, I looked like I was uh, from the film The Warriors in New York Warriors. City. Love you know, where I was like, well, yeah. that was survival. I had to look like I was part down with the program. So, to, so to walk with like a sort of, like I was of that culture, I, you know, maybe a... And I see an SC30 oh. in the background. The what the? Is that a Macintosh? SC30? Oh my God, that's <laughs> that's the that dates the photograph pretty yes, well. Yes, that's awesome. And that's me too. I don't know. Don't even ask, but that's me doing whatever it is that I thought Tired I was doing. Pose, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, hi, Jill. Uh, we're speaking with Martin BC. He stopped by. Bessie, I'm sorry. He stopped by uh, Record Create this afternoon. He's playing tonight at Slim's downtown Raleigh, and uh, he stopped by, and we're just chatting with him and talking about all this cool stuff. Yeah. So, wow. Wow. It has been a, a pleasure. I've enjoyed hanging out with you and learning, a little, <clears throat> learning even more about. Um, your studio, your recordings. Well, thanks, Adam. I mean, and, the main and, thing for and, me is great things knock, like on, that. knock on glass. Knock on cardboard glass, and, cardboard. You know, and Is that the studio still there? You know, and uh, as usual, it's 
Uh, you know, I've never, I'm, I'm, I'm not one that, to look for buzz bands. I'm not one yeah. to look for the next big thing. Um, most of what I do, people haven't heard of. Yeah. As always, even when there was was stuff that people either heard of or eventually heard of, it was mostly stuff no one heard of. Yeah. Um, and that kind of works, you know. It's so uh, uh, I, I I try to support the the world and the scene that that made me very lucky and made it possible to um, well to do that for a living, which is ridiculous. Yeah. You know. So and then also to have enough time to also work on my own music and tour and stuff so you know all good but I, I really try to like foster that's like I think of it as like the buffalo you know it's like like everything all good has come yeah to me that sustains me nourishes me ideas intellectually physically and um uh actually the those records were like I said they were a, a benefit for those for those medical expenses and so even mm -hmm. physically kind of the, the people coming out who'd been a history part of the history of the studio helping make it so that was um oh, that's awesome that was inspiring as well yeah. oh great thank you so much okay i hope you enjoy your visit in north carolina <laughs> and i hope tonight is a fab fabulous show and uh and thanks so much for sharing with us. Well, thank you. Oh, right. Wayland Storms. Wayland Storms is playing tonight also. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, oh, my God. I'm embarrassed to forget the other one. But anyway, Wayland Storms is good. Yeah. And so they'll they'll play before me or something like that. Yeah. I forget the order. Oh, that'd be cool. So it starts at? Uh, it starts at 9. It starts at 9 p.m., folks. Get your butts down there and go check them out. And uh, and Slims is a cool place. they got a nice yeah. outdoor area. So oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Cool. you like it. Forward. I mean, and there's yeah. there's some cool restaurants in the walk-in area, so I'm sure somebody oh. will point you in the right direction That's there. That's nice. Great. All right, well, thanks so much. Bye. <laughs> Bye. All right, folks, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I'm going to hang up and, uh, and stuff like that. Keep in mind that we'll have some really cool uh, merchandise here uh, from BC35 and from Martin, his solo stuff, and... And there we go. All right. Everybody have a wonderful night.